Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Wednesday night. Uh, looks like May 10th, 2023. It's about 1046 here along the West Coast in the state of California. And the uh, latest earth earthquake activity looks like some movement down in the Southern California as well. Um, looks like quite a few microquakes kicking off still within our swarming area down along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Not a whole lot of um, movement across the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault right now, fairly quiet. The rest of the west coast uh, looks fairly minimal as well. We did see some movement well off the coast of Oregon into the Blanco Fracture Zone, a 3.1 coming in here earlier this afternoon, about 10 kilometers deep. So see what we got going on here for the trimmer map over the last 24 hours looks like most of the movement here across the oregon area 19 epicenters of trimmer uh, down here along the southern end of the cascadia uh, getting a little bit of activity across arizona it's been a little while since we've seen uh, uh this much earthquake activity here across this portion of arizona near additional hill gray mountain area uh, there's definitely some fault systems that do run through this area uh, looks like the latest, a 3.1. Uh, looks like maybe a few folks did report feeling that earthquake. It is in a zone that does see, well, a little bit of historical data. And there's also some fault systems that run through here near the painted desert area. So not uh, uncommon to see some earthquake activity out there into the uh, desert area of Arizona north of Flagstaff, by the way, uh, into Colorado as well, near Trinidad. Now, I'm pretty certain I know what's out here. Let's see what we have for satellite data, uh, at least within one of these regions here. These are not your family campsites out here. These are all oil or maybe potentially fracking operations out here near Segunda, uh, Colorado area. Notice these roads leading out here in the mountains to some oil pumping operations out there and also some wastewater disposal facilities scattered about this area. And they're all over the place. Let me tell you, they're, they're numerous. <laughs> There's quite a bit. Uh, looking at the U.S. hazard map here shows a little bit of a uh, seismic hazard across this area of Colorado, but I believe most of that activity is uh, indeed generated from the uh, seismic or the uh, wastewater dis disposal well and also the oil pumping operations out here. Uh, this 2.4 that came in is kind of an, in an odd area. There's not a whole lot of oil pumping operations out here that I can see. Um, so a little on the weird side here to see this little 2.4 uh, coming in. All right, uh, Kansas, what's going on up here in Kansas, north of Wichita, 2.7 near Lincoln, Lincolnville, Kansas. Looks like that coming in earlier this afternoon, about five kilometers or so deep below the surface. Uh, it is out there into, uh, kind of hard to tell. I really haven't been across this area of Kansas, um, but looking at the satellite view shows it uh, beneath the field here. Not seeing any major um, pumping operations out here. It doesn't look like it. Then again, I'm not for sure what's going on out here within this area of Kansas. Looks like that, uh, again, outside of the Wichita area. All right, um, Mexico, outside of Mexico City, a 3.1 coming in. That's actually being reported by the USGS. A little odd, right? Normally they won't report too much activity down there uh, into the Mexico area, but they are for a 3.9. Um, again, outside of Mexico City, we have seen a little bit of elevated earthquake activity here across the Middle America Trench. Looks like that is applying a little bit of stress inland. This earthquake occurring about 5.9 kilometers deep there outside of the Mexico City area. 
and uh, I believe this is a very active zone here, historical, uh, that is, for earthquake activity. I uh, do see a lot of earthquake activity here across the region south and west. Uh, specifically, though, across the Mexico C City area, there's not a whole lot of uh, 4.5 and above across this region. So a little odd, definitely a little bit of odd earthquake activity occurring. South America, not a whole lot going on there across the region. And on the Earthquake 3D globe, there's actually nothing showing up here, uh, even from the EMSC data. That's a little odd. South America is a major seismically uh, active zone here across the Peru-Chile Trench, and there's nothing. Kind of, kind of find that a uh, little on the odd side that this is the only major area that's not shown anything uh, out there. All right, uh, of course, we did have some larger scale earthquake activity, 7.6 earlier uh, this morning, making this uh, Tonga earthquake the second largest earthquake of this year so far. A little bit of shallow earthquake activity occurring upstream with some subsequent movement around Solomon Islands. As uh, far as any major adjustment goes uh, westward here, it doesn't look like it. Uh, we did see a little bit, slight uptick in activity up here in Japan, following that movement down south, uh, including some deeper activity here across the uh, Izu Trench. So it looks like that Pacific Plate is definitely trying to work its way further west here. This is a major uh, region that does see uh, the stress here from the general plate movement uh, and that includes a Pacific plate heading off to the west northwest here so got to remember that 7.6 applying quite a bit of strain up here uh, and that's kind of where we're looking at the activity right now uh, not a whole lot going on or at least being reported across the rest of the globe uh, look, looks like a little bit of activity here eastern uh, where's that 4.5 at let me see where this is at here real quick. It looks like the Afghanistan area. Eastern Afghanistan, 180 kilometers deep. 2.3 being reported in central Italy. Uh, aside from that, most of the movement across the Mediterranean there. Generally light. We did see a little uptick in earthquake activity here. Uh, north of uh, Greenland, it looks like. Into the plate boundary. A couple fours coming in there. Aside from that, the Atlantic area, very, very quiet. All right, let me see what else we have here across the uh, region. Hawaii, got a little bit of earthquake activity here across the Kilauea volcano and down here in Pahala. Nothing, no, no major changes to note, but uh, still just kind of seeing a general earthquake uptick across this area. Some of these quakes occurring... Uh, somewhat deep, somewhat shallow, uh, still leads me to believe that there's still, um, you know, a future uh, potential eruption there at Kilauea Volcano uh, eventually. Uh, 2.1 King Salmon area. Salmon or Salmon? How would you pronounce that? Depending on where you're at, right? I would call that Salmon. Um, Alaska area. Nothing big going on up there in Alaska currently. It's all uh, very small microquake activity. Most of the movement, though, if you look at the general activity here across the map, uh, obviously from that 7.6 down there in Tonga, a uh, noticeable uptick here across the uh, uh, North American region with uh, some areas off the plate boundary, including Colorado and Arizona and other areas inland here around the southern plains showing some elevated activity. Uh, let's see what we got for the uh, Yellowstone activity here tonight. Nothing really going on here across the area. Looks fairly quiet. As far as New Zealand goes, I know kind of jumped over that, but uh, let's see what we got going on here. 13 hours ago, 2.9. That really doesn't help us out. Let's see what we got here for all activity. Uh, 3.0. Looks like Kermadec Trench area, well north of the North Island area. Uh, earthquake drums this definitely gives us a good indicator of what's going on right there is the 7.6 showing up there obviously across the uh, majority of the stations here 
Haven't really seen any adjustment here across New Zealand yet. But gotta remember this general plate activity does uh, put New Zealand here into the uh, range of elevated activity. Uh, just a matter of time here before it works its way down. All right, uh, space weather activity, and then we'll check out the severe weather threat tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so it looks like, uh, let's see, we're expecting a G3 class storm tonight. Here is the time frame. It looks like the solar ham site has updated it uh, to include the most recent update here. Between 12 and 18, a UTC time of May 11th. So that would include, uh, well, that would include um, today, but it looks like between the 12 and 1800 time frame. And unfortunately, that's going to include um, the daylit uh, area of the North American continent. So that unfortunately <clears throat> means that uh, uh, the folks there on the opposite side here of us uh, Russia, Europe area, and uh, regions up north here on this side of the planet would see the brunt of the system. So, um, unfortunately, that doesn't, uh, you know, not a good sign here for the uh, North American continent. But we're expecting, it looks like maybe up around the KP index of 7. Um, either way, unsettled conditions here prevailing over the next couple nights. So we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, here's the current Aurora forecast here over the next 30 minutes or so. Getting a little activity up into Canada region, so northern Alaska, maybe. Um, now, I can't really say Greenland or Iceland. They're lit up already from the sun. Um, let's go back here. Kind of jumped over there for some reason. I'm working on about two hours of sleep, folks. I was out there trying to work my bull thistle. I got some, I got like literally eight or nine feet tall bull thistle in my yard, uh, or actually out in my field. Uh, that's, I've never seen that. And I've lived here at my place for 15, 20 years. And um, it, due to the extreme wet winter, and, uh, well, we, the, I guess we had a thunderstorm develop directly over this area when I was out in Texas a couple days ago. Dropped an inch, almost an inch and a half of rain. So the bull thistle is loving that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, man, I'm struggling with my weed control. Uh, I got, you know, eight feet tall weeds out here right now. So I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to try to, uh, dug at it a little bit earlier but man, I am so tired and just drained from uh, the past week or so of uh, um, some storm chasing out there into Texas. All right, so, all right, let's go back here across the area. Um, flare activity 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 60, X flare around 20% chance still. And we are still looking at a consistent proton event here across the northern and the southern. Uh, polar regions looking fairly active uh, not for sure exactly what is causing that activity um, but it's happening there at the polar region so uh, as far as the CME activity that's expected that uh, will take place a little bit later on today with that G, uh, G3 class storming um, well that <laughs> that doesn't help us much right What's going on in the sun? Well, take a guess, right? <laughs> Let's check out the latest image here across the uh, magnetic structure of the uh, solar regions. And uh, as we hold on a second here, let me see what we got. I'm going to zoom this up here a little bit so we can see a little bit more complex structure. Unfortunately, this very active region now is uh, turning away from us there on the northwestern side of the sun. That is looking very promising. There's so many different uh, structures there within that sunspot that harbor X flare potential. And um, that's turning away from us. So, uh, And we're left with not a whole lot of complex structures out here in terms of sunspot uh, instability. 
This regional sunspot here on the northeastern side of the sun looks somewhat promising, uh, but we'll watch that in the coming days. So 20% chance of the X flare, uh, but again, that is facing away from us, gonna be facing away from us. This is the latest imagery. Uh, you can kind of see this area right here pop, pop in a little bit uh, with some flaring right now. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that, folks. Uh, solar flare threat tomorrow. Uh, this is tomorrow. Uh, this is going to be on Thursday. Uh, a good portion of Oklahoma and Kansas in a severe weather threat. And that includes 10% chance of a tornado probability in the Oklahoma City, Wichita, Norman, Oklahoma, Edmond, Midwest City, Oklahoma. I was just up there a couple days ago. Actually, it was just yesterday. <laughs> I, you know, it's crazy what lack of sleep will do to your common sense. Well, I can't say common sense, but reasoning and whatnot. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to crash pretty hardcore here after being on the road for a week or so uh, and, and very minimal sleep last night. I'm not even joking. So Oklahoma City, Kansas area watch out tomorrow there's a high probability of tornadoes uh, and that includes in the hatched area ef2 to ef5 probability within 25 miles of a point that's the dashed area here that includes the okc area wind and hell event as well uh, looks like a 30 percent probability within that region of uh, oklahoma and the kansas area it's a big deal tomorrow folks uh, looking at the numerical models here, we're going to bring up the regions of um, the South Central U.S. here. We're going to pop up the NAM model and just kind of get a better view of what's going on out here across the Oklahoma area come tomorrow. Okay, now notice that we have a low pressure system up here. Looks like uh, into the um, Colorado area, eastern Colorado, going to be turning obviously counterclockwise and uh, pulling up quite a bit of moisture and with this setup here we're going to get some rotating storms across the Oklahoma and Kansas area now it doesn't look like a broad area of movement but uh, with this type of setup these rotating storms will produce tornadoes uh, here's the uh, predicted NAM model for tomorrow afternoon uh, late afternoon time period so uh, definitely a big hail threat and um, that will extend, looks like, uh, let's see what we got here for the next day, day three. Looks like it will extend further up north into the uh, eastern Nebraska area, maybe Iowa as well. Uh, but either way, very active region coming into the areas. Uh, the southern northern plains area and the Midwest. A lot of moisture coming in here from the Gulf. All right, folks, um, we're going to uh, definitely need to go to sleep. I need some sleep. This is one of the times where I'm not going to lie. I am very, very drained and tired. And uh, we're going to call it a night, folks. So I hope everyone stays safe out there and uh, has a good Wednesday night. We'll catch you guys back here uh, sometime tomorrow. Have a good one, everyone. Peace out. <laughs>